Okay, so in this lecture, I'm going to explain how you can write a really simple uh, shopping basket that is very similar in many ways uh, to the kind of approach that I suggested to implement the high score functionality and the registration functionality in the first piece of coursework. So this is uh, this this basket works, um, and but it's not perfect, as I explain. Um, and in the next lecture, I'm going to explain how you can write a better object-oriented basket. But this one is probably the easiest, easiest approach to use, particularly if you're not confident with your JavaScript yet. So the idea here um, is, you know, with all baskets, um, you, the user adds the product to the basket, right? The basket persists across multiple pages. You don't want the user to add something to the basket and then to disappear when they look at something else. And then when the customer wants to check out, um, the, basket, the basket items are converted into an order. You display the list of things in the basket to the customer. They click check out, and then that's submitted to the server that generates the order and stores the order in the database. Now, there's different ways in which we can use to, different approaches can be used to implement a basket. So session storage on the client, for example, HTML session storage, that's the approach I'm going to explain here. You could use PHP session storage. I'm not going to cover that in this course, um, but it would really work much the same way as uh, HTML session storage. You'd use uh, some kind of PHP object within the session variable to hold the items in the basket. That would work perfectly well. Um, or you could also have a sort of more sophisticated basket with stock management um, by, uh, by using a document to hold the basket in uh, MongoDB. And I'll sort of explain roughly what I mean by that in the next lecture. So in this lecture, I'm going to show you how you can use a, implement a basket using HTML session storage. Um, exactly, pretty much identical to HTML local storage, except session storage, um, sorry, local storage, you know, never gets deleted unless you explicitly clear it, whereas session storage gets deleted the moment you close the tab. Um, but you use them in both in the same way. Um, we have like session storage here, dots, you know, whatever you want to call it, in this case, my variable. Uh, equals hello there. So that's storing the string hello there in session storage. Now, you know, if you recall from last term, you can only store strings um, in session storage or they'll be converted to strings. So if you want to store objects, you have to stringify them to store them and then you have to pass them to convert them back into JavaScript objects. And so if you want to retrieve the string, we just say my string equals session storage my variable. Very easy to use. As I said, items in session storage are del deleted when you close the browser or the tab. So, um, in our HTML session storage basket, um, we're going to make it work in exactly the same way as with coursework one. We're going to create a JavaScript object containing the data we want to store. In this case, the price, number, and ID of a product. Uh, ID of a product. We're going to so we're going to create an object representing the product in the basket. We're going to add the object to the array and store a stringified version of this array in HTML session storage. And whenever the page is loaded, we're going to pull out the basket from session storage um, and insert that into the HTML so the user can see uh, what's in their basket. So I've got a little bit of an example here. Um, client basket PHP. So this basket's far from perfect, as you'll see. I'm just trying to get you started on the basket. And I'm obviously, obviously I mean, you know, if you want to produce a good basket, then there's a lot of work to do to make this a lot better. So the Basket examples, and, and as with all this stuff, uh, you can use the code because the code's slightly rubbish. So I don't mind because you're going to kind of going to need to adapt it to make it work properly. So, but in the basket example, the client basket PHP loads a list of products from the database and outputs the products um, to the user um, with a button that enables them to be added to the basket. Um, and it also lists the products that are currently in the basket, and that's um, done using the JavaScript. So the PHP does this, and as you'll see, the PHP is kind of wrapping, providing kind of the JavaScript calls to the JavaScript is output by the PHP so that the user can add things to the basket. So I'll give you a demo first. Um, might make it easier to understand what's going on. Uh, so here's my shopping website. So what the PHP is doing is it's outputting uh, the contents of the you know, cat magnet database uh, wrapped in some HTML. It's also got these buttons here, and when these buttons are clicked, it calls the JavaScript functions um, that add the products to the basket. So if I click on American Curl, Exotic Short Hair, uh, maybe Chartreuse and European, you can see it's adding all these products to the basket. It's not doing anything clever. It should really put these, you know, have like a 
number two here because you've got two other things. It's not doing anything like that. Now, if I refresh the page, um, you can see, you know, um, the, bas the basket persists. If I close the tab and open it again, then the basket wouldn't persist. Now, if I click on empty basket, empties the basket. If I refresh it, basket remains empty. So let's add a few things. And then I click on checkout. That sends, it, sends the contents of the basket um, to this checkout uh, script there, um, which at the moment is just outputting what was sent to it. it it's not doing anything clever with storing orders or anything like that. All of that functionality is up to you. Right, so this is the, the PHP script here. Now, as I said, you've got the code, so you know, the fact that it looks tiny on this recording you know, it isn't such a big deal. And I'll just briefly talk you through it. Okay, so this is the usual boilerplate stuff of connecting to the database. And we're, what we're doing here is calling products.find. We're basically searching for all of the products in the database. Again, you'd have fixed that in your own code. Then what we got here, this is the sort of more crucial part of the, um, of the code here. So what we're doing is we're, we've got the products here. We found all the products in the database and we're wrapping them in some HTML. Most crucially, we're wrapping them some HTML with some JavaScript that enable, so that when we click on the button, it will call add to basket. I'm gonna explain that in a little bit. So what this is doing is outputting this stuff here, okay, with the buttons um, that enable us to add things to the basket. And then at the bottom here, so at the top, oh no, sorry, yeah. At the bottom here, um, we've got our a div with the ID of basket div, and I think we've also got, um, I think we must be including the basket, the script for the JavaScript somewhere or another. Anyway. Um, at the bottom of here, we've got the, um, the basket div, which has all the list of items that are in the basket. Then here's the JavaScript file. Um, the JavaScript is loading the basket from session storage whenever the page loads. When the user clicks on, a bar, on a, one of those buttons, it, it uh, adds the products to the basket. And then it builds a form with a hidden field containing the product IDs and the product counts. And it's the product IDs and products counts that are going to be sent to the server um, when the user clicks out. Sends, chooses to, to check, clicks on the checkout button. So I'll go through the JavaScript code now a little bit. So first thing we've got um, is to display the basket in the page. So whenever the page is loaded, we get the window on load event, it calls this function here, load basket. So what load basket does, it obviously loads the basket, but it does that. Um, first it creates a, a basket array. It looks, looks in the session storage. This, so this is a global variable basket array. It looks in the session storage to see if there's a, 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 very, so a key called basket. If it can't find it, it initializes the basket array to an empty array. Otherwise, if it's found a basket in the session storage, then it passes that to convert the string representation of the basket into a JavaScript object here. Then it builds up a, it wraps the data in the basket in a bunch of HTML. Um, most importantly, it's wrapping it in a form. Um, here, so it's got a number of items in baskets. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay, yeah, so what we're doing here is um, we've got an array of product IDs because um, that's what we're sending to the server. And we're working through um, the basket that's stored in session storage. Um, we're creating a string um, that's sort of, you know, that, that's the sort of user, what the user sees here is the names of the products. And we're also storing all of the IDs of the products in the basket in this product IDs array. And then we've got an input field, a hidden input field um, that has um, the array of product IDs in a JSON format, so that when the user clicks on uh, submit, um, in this case, uh, this checkout button, it's, it doesn't send the, the sort of the HTML or the product names, it sends an array containing all the IDs of the products in the basket, and that enables the server to know that, it, you know, to uh, process those IDs and add them to the customer's order. And then it's sort of, Fishes out the basket div and puts in the HTML string. 
try this, this looks wrong to me actually. I think it's some kind of minor mistake here because we've got, this is overwriting it here. So I think you can just ignore that HTML string there. There's some kind of error, not deliberate. It's this HTML string here. That's what was confusing me initially. So it, what we've got is a, is a form um, containing um, the stuff you see and the stuff you don't see, which is the hidden array of product IDs. And when you click on checkout, that submits the form to the server and it submits it to checkout PHP script um, so that the checkout PHP script to do whatever checking out you need to do. So that's the loading of the basket. And that's loading that stuff into the page. Then we've got add to basket. Um, and this is where we're clicking on a button here um, to add a particular product to the basket. So to understand this function, um, we need to look at the scripts, look at the PHP. And because it's so unclear in my... Um, In my screen capture, I'm going to show you it here. So this is the PHP script client basket. So it's pulling all of the uh, products from the database, and now it's wrapping them in HTML. But as part of that wrapping, um, these, these buttons are the buttons that you saw on the right, the bus basket buttons. And it's got an on-click event. When the, when the button's clicked, it calls the add to basket function in JavaScript, and it has two arguments. It has the ID of the product and the name of the product. So it's calling, whenever you click on one of those buttons, it's calling add to basket with the ID and name of the product um, that corresponds to the, to the row that you clicked on. So this is the add to basket function. So as you can see, the, the PHP has wrapped the products in this HTML. The HTML's got this JavaScript function and, the, and with the appropriate product ID and product name. So calling the add to basket when we click on that button. And again, we're doing, we're fishing out the basket array from session storage, um, either creating a new one if it doesn't exist or passing it if it does exist. And then we're creating a new object with the ID that we've been sent here and the product name that we've been sent here. Um, and we're adding that to our basket array and then we're putting that back in session storage. And then we're at the bottom of this, we're calling load basket, which will pull out whatever's in session storage and load it into the page with, in this case, the updated information. And the final bit of the functionality is pretty easy. Um, empty basket, we just clear all the session storage, and then we load the basket again, which we just basically load an empty basket. So, as I explained, um, if we go back to here, um, when we click on checkout, it's built this form with an array of product IDs, and it's sending those array of product IDs to checkout.php. And checkout.php um, is receiving an array of product IDs, um, and what it does is extracts this information and displays it to the user. So as you can see here, it gets it's the it's been, the product IDs are being posted. In this case, I have to directly access post, which uh, NetBeans doesn't like, hence the warning, um, because I find it tricky to extract uh, JSON data from post using the filter input, it seems to get rid of it. There's probably some filter input that does it better, but anyway, in this case, I'm directly accessing product IDs um, from post, and then I'm decoding it, converting it into a PHP object, and then I'm just working through that PHP object, which is an array in this case, and outputting all of the product IDs that have been sent to the server. So this is uh, product IDs and the server. So this, so this checkout doesn't actually do any checking out, right? This just uh, outputs a list of the product IDs. So it's up to you. That's why I'm perfectly happy for you to use this code because it doesn't do what you need it to do. What you have to do if you're using this code is then figure out how to actually add this in a sensible way to a document that represents the order that the customer has made and then echoing something a bit better um, back here. So as I said, it's only a starting point. Um, you need to obviously add code to get the customer ID from the session variable or request the customer's IDs because no customer's information has been sent here. You obviously need to add an order document to the database that has the product IDs, customer ID, and so on and so forth. Ideally, you're going to reduce the stock count in the product database because you've sold some of these products, right? And you obviously need to play a more sensible confirmation page. So the, all of this code is only a starting point, but I hope it's, I hope it's a sensible starting point. We could have built almost the same, fun well, the same identical functionality using the session variable. In this case, we could have a form that submits um, to itself. Um, and each time it submits, it would check post for new basket products and then add the new basket products uh, to the session variable. So instead of storing it in HTML session storage, we could have used PHP session variable to store the same information. And then the page itself could 
look in the session variable, fish out all the items in the basket, and put that into the page. So I haven't bothered demonstrating this, but it's, it's, it's identical functionality. So all the example code's there. You're welcome to use it as a starting point for the functionality on your own e-commerce websites. So this lecture, I've just been trying to get you started, give you some ideas about how you can build a simple basket using HTML session storage. The next lecture is going to show you how you can use object-oriented JavaScript to build a basket that has much better stock management. So you've got a basket that sort of automatically synchronizes with a server, uh, I think using Ajax from what I remember, so that you can have a document on the server um, that corresponds to the basket, and then you can do you can move stock items to and from that basket, and then prevent the same prevent uh, two users from buying the same product if you've only got one product in stock. 